Here's a recap on the symposium on anesthesia and consciousness. After several decades of intense research and with the uh, experimental and technical prowess of 21st century neuroscience, that we as a field would be homing in on the specific neural circuits, neural processes, neural subpopulations responsible for consciousness. But in fact, there's still active debate in the field as to whether or not the neural correlates of consciousness are, in what might be considered coarse terms, in the front of the brain or in the back of the brain. Dr. George Mashore started off the symposium um, with a discussion that really focused on frontal parietal connectivity and how that relates to both consciousness um, and also anesthesia. Dr. Mashore has a lot of experience in this field uh, and really has been a pioneer in it. Um, and he showcased uh, some of his experiments most recently uh, with rats um, where he described the cholinergic contributions of the prefrontal cortex and how important they are to mediate conscious perception in these frontal parietal networks. Activation of the prefrontal cortex appears to be important for the content of consciousness. I've shown you that cholinergic activation of the prefrontal cortex, but not posterior areas, can reverse anesthesia and thus might be important in regulating the level of consciousness. And potentially, sub-anesthetic could play a role in enhancing cortical cholinergic tone. Dr. Robert Sanders followed Dr. Mishore um, with a compelling discussion about the real definition of consciousness that we should be using as anesthesiologists. What I mean by consciousness is the ability to have a subjective experience, so any form of experience, no matter how simple. Because anesthesiologists, I believe, part of our role is to ablate any form of experience in anesthesia. Using this framework, Dr. Sanders posited that a dreamlike state of disconnected consciousness is an appropriate anesthetic state and should become a target of future research. Connected consciousness can occur in ROS, Sensory disconnection can be induced by our drugs. And we need to find a way in which we can optimize, I think, the balance between providing a state of sensory disconnection and um, a state of unconsciousness under anesthesia. Dr. Ken Solt and Dr. Stephanie Blamarais finished a symposium with two fascinating talks. First, Dr. Solt discussed how methylphenidate, also known as Ritalin and caffeine, can be used to speed up emergence from general anesthesia and Dr. Stephanie Blamarais presented her data that uses anesthesia to discriminate between patients who are in a minimally conscious state, unresponsive wakefulness syndrome, and other disorders of consciousness. The main take-home message from this symposium is that as anesthesiologists, we're uniquely positioned to enhance the field of study of consciousness, which ultimately is going to allow us to provide better care to our patients.